Well, hello, Grace Bible Church. We hope that wherever you are and whenever you're watching this video that you're having a great day. I'm here with Pastor Rick again. And as you know, on this uh, vlog, we seek to take questions, whether they be in Scripture or just from the world around us and what's going on in life and in this world. And uh, we try to evaluate them from a, a biblical lens and a biblical worldview. We try to assess things as Scripture would have us assess them. And, and Pastor Rick kind of tries to take us through how he thinks through different issues. Uh, today, Pastor Rick, is a very important topic, uh, especially in light of what's coming up in a few weeks. In just a, a few weeks from now, we will all be going to the polls and we will be casting votes for the next president of our country. I know that this election in particular has been discouraging for many because it can feel at times as though there isn't a great choice or it's not super clear cut. You know, there's people all over the spectrum about how they feel about this election and how they think they're going to vote. I think what many people feel is confusion and they're not really sure how to make a decision. Uh, so just walk walk through with us. How do you think about an election from a biblical standpoint and what are you what are you doing as you seek to go and make that decision? Well, I think one of the first things that we have to always remember in this context is that we do not place our hope in any political candidate or any political party. Our hope must reside strictly with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, whose kingdom is not of this world. Yeah. And um, whether we have a Democratic uh, president or Congress or a Republican president or Congress, the purposes of God are going to continue. And we did a vlog on this several weeks right. ago yeah, just that weeks I, would, ago. Yeah. I would encourage you to go back and, and look to about how engaged we ought to be in politics. And I think mm -hmm. that would be, provide some guidance. Uh, when, when it comes right down to it, I believe that the, that the Christian has an obligation, uh, both morally and biblically, to participate in the process mm -hmm. of uh, the selection of our next president and senators and congressmen and so on. I, I don't think to, to absent ourselves from the process serves the Lord well. Um, I think that the church's primary responsibility is to serve as a restraining influence, as the salt of the earth. And as a restraining influence, our responsibility is to assess political parties and to the degree that we are able to be of influence, however minuscule it might be, that we have the responsibility to do what we can to be um, a means of restraint. Hmm. Uh, on the one hand, we are to proclaim the gospel, and that's not a political issue at all. That's just a, a proclamation of the gospel. On the other hand, we have the responsibility to restrain evil and wicked wickedness. And we can do that through how we vote. Now, granted, there, you know, I've seen people say, I only vote for Jesus. Well, that's a great <laughs> heart. I mean, I, sure. I truly believe that's a sure. great heart, but yeah. that's completely irrelevant. Right. Because Jesus is not running in this campaign. Right. Right. So I, I think that that, that falls short of being responsible. Hmm. Obviously, Jesus is the one to whom all of our allegiance goes all the time. But because we have allegiance to Jesus, that means that we have to strive to see his interests um, preserved or uh, advanced to whatever degree that we can through hmm. whatever uh, process we're able to be involved right. in. In the American political system, it is through what is called the franchise or the ability to vote. That is to represent our, our perspectives through the ballot box. And so I, I would say that personally, um, you know, you, you, you kind of hold your nose at, in some ways. Um, and in other ways, I eagerly vote. Right. And right. part of the reason is because I don't think that you vote strictly for a candidate. I think mm. that's, that's short-sighted. Right. You really are voting for a political platform mm. that the candidate represents. So obviously, uh, if uh, Donald Trump is elected president and Mike Pence, Donald Trump could pass away upon entering office, God forbid that that would happen, or if Joe Biden is elected, he could pass away, and either Pence or Harris would ascend to the presidency, and they would select a vice president, and they could die in office, right. and their selected vice, this happened with Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford and so yeah. on, um, who selected a, a new vice president that was next in line if something were to happen to the, the vice president who had become president. 
And so that the, the people come and go in the office, but the platform is really what stabilizes everything. Hmm. And the American voter votes not just for a candidate, but they vote for a platform being represented by the candidate. Right. And so you have to take it above the issue of personality, hmm. and you have to go to the platform. Which platform is most closely aligned with the believer's priorities? Hmm. I personally believe that there's a clear choice in this election as you look at the platforms. Uh, the Democratic platform, as an example, uh, advocates uh, and, and pushes the LGBTQ uh, agenda right. and the sexual revolution. Right. They're all over that. Uh, they are pushing that. They are pro-abortion all the way through, uh, even getting rid of the Hyde Amendment and other things that are designed to protect individual states and people from having their tax money funding right. abortion. Right. They're for, for eliminating that. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of things that are in these platforms that the Christian cannot stand for. Um, they, uh, just, it's something that I, I don't believe a, a Christian ought to be voting for that platform. Mm. Uh, on the issue of drugs, the legalization of marijuana federally, a variety of things that right. exist there. All sorts of social issues that we would yeah, probably and, balk at if we knew what they were proposing. And, and basically down philosophically, they have a violation of a variety of biblical principles, mm. even to the issue of, of, of individual responsibility um, in terms of um, welfare, in terms of social programming, in terms of work and minimum wage and so many different things hmm. that that really take away from the individual responsibility and uh, they they believe in a, a greater social provision and so their platform carries with it a certain uh, philosophy that sees the government one of its primary purposes is to provide and that's not what government is designed to do. It's designed to protect hmm. and to protect you from crime and from um, aggressors, right. uh, whether Pressure, foreign or abuse, domestic. Yeah, yeah that, that kind of thing. So yeah. that, that's what the government is designed to do. It's not designed to provide. The Democratic Party really has hmm. a, a bent on social programs and even um, you know, things that there are elements in the Democratic Party that are pushing for socialism. Um, and, right. and, and uh, health care and uh, a variety of things that mm -hmm. really take personal responsibility, which is the biblical principle, right. out of the yeah. equation. Right. Um, now, the Republican Party um, is not perfect. Sure, uh, sure. But I would say that, that the Republican platform more closely represents a biblical worldview than the Democratic platform does. Admitting that both Biden and Trump are both sinful men, right. flawed men, right. uh, in different ways and in different you know, temperaments and different personalities, but they're both flawed. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you're, if you simplistically look at the individuals. Right, and vote purely on, on the individuals, personalities. Yep. Personalities. Uh, you're not voting according to a biblical priority. Hmm. Even though you say, well... I think this person is more loving, or this person is nicer, right. or this right. person is more sophisticated and right. refined. This person is more, you know, crass, um, uh, confrontational, and rude, mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to strip all of that stuff away and yeah. go down to the platform and say, what do they stand for? Right. Hmm. Um, yeah. And on the issue of abortion, on the issue of yeah. the um, the uh, constructionist versus the uh, fluid. Uh, Supreme Court issues, mm -hmm. wh whether the Constitution is a dynamic document right. that is able to be uh, altered and interpreted differently based right. on social priorities, or whether the uh, Constitution is static and is to be understood in the manner of which it was originally written. Right. Right. So whether you're an originalist or an uh, in impressionist or whatever comes with the issue of the Constitution, those are big issues. Yeah. Those are really big issues. Yep. The Republicans are originalists. The Democrats are more of the fluid, um, adjusting kind right. of a right. uh, perspective on on the the issue of the Supreme Court and how the Constitution is going to be read. Uh, the Republicans believe that that social issues ought to be resolved in Congress, 
-hmm. the Democrats tend to believe that the social controversial things should be settled by the courts, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. been their mo mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for decades. Right, and so which I, essentially removes the power of the people in that process. Right, right? when you take it to the courts, you're you're removing the uh, the representative format of the right. of, of government. And some of these things. Uh, like abortion rights, would never have passed Congress. Right. The only right. way they could get those things legalized right. was through the judicial. Right. And that's where they went with right. liberal judges, um, and and they, you know, cherry pick judges and so on to get all the way to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. after having placed mm -hmm. in the Supreme Court liberal right. judge justices. Right. So there's a lot that goes into this, and really, I, I I've kind of shared a perspective that I have on the subject. Yeah. But really, everybody has to follow their own conscience. Yeah. I, mean, I cannot be a conscience for a person. I'm just giving you my opinion. How You asked me how do you right. personally work no, through exactly. these things. Yeah. And that's what I'm sharing with you. Yeah. Um, but everyone has to uh, uh, answer for himself before the Lord. And, um, you know, there are, are some who believe that the Democrats are more charitable, mm -hmm. meaning that they... they uh, sure. More loving and caring. Right. Caring, caring for those <coughs> without, caring for those that are in right. hardship. Right, destitute, yeah. Yeah. so on. Sure. Excuse me. <coughs> so there's this persuasion that they're more Christian mm -hmm. in outlook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there are some people that go the, in that direction. Right. I quibble with that, but you know, I, I recognize that there's a there are there are rationalities to right, how people right. think, and that's that's things. more of a common goal. Different means of getting there, difference essentially. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, I think as as we look at this, uh, you know, to to argue against divesting yourself of any interest, saying I'm not right. going to be involved in right. this, right? Because think, I think some Christians they would say right now, my conscience tells me. I can't vote either way. Right. You know, I, I mean, right. the, the, the waters are so muddied, I don't know what to do. And I think we have the responsibility to, to be involved in restraint mm -hmm. and, and asking ourselves which political party, which political platform best represents the restraint that I want mm -hmm. to see. Because that's what government's for, is to restrain. Right. Um, it, it, it's God's common grace to hold back evil from correct, progressing. Yeah. Correct. And so as salt and, and as restraining influence, which is the church, we have the responsibility to be involved to help contribute to mm -hmm. the restraint. Um, you know, it's interesting that in Jeremiah 29, there is a uh, uh, instruction to Israel, and I understand the dispensational <laughs> distinctions sure. and so on and so forth. Yeah. I understand all that, but the principle is this. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile hmm. and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will have welfare. Hmm. Now not welfare in terms of money and support but welfare in terms of just the the quality of life. Right. That that we have the responsibility to contribute to whatever degree that we can on the welfare of our city or country, nation, and to seek to promote godliness in that nation to whatever degree we are able. And it's interesting that we're told that we are to pray for kings and mm -hmm. authorities right. that it may go well with us, right. that we might live at peace. And uh, I think that, that that certainly prayer is one element that we need to incorporate into this entire discussion, yep. praying for God to set up or tear down kings according to his will, but then to be vessels that participate in the execution of his will through the ballot, which is how God works. It's through the ballot box in setting up and tearing down mm. presidents right. and congressmen. Uh, so I would say that and as such, if we're praying for God to place in office the, the man of his choosing, that we have to then discern what would we think or what do we think uh, concerning what uh, platform a particular candidate represents and vote for that platform, praying that God will allow that platform mm. as opposed to this other platform right. to be the one that prevails in the election. Right. And that's what seeking the welfare of that nation means, uh, because in that we will have welfare. And, and I think it's important that yeah. we 
observe that reality that God desires to use us to execute his will within this process. Hmm. He's yeah. also going to use others who vote. He's going to lead right. in the hearts of even unbelievers right. to vote in a particular way to accomplish right. his will. It may be that, uh, well, I'm certain that we will receive the man of God's choice. Yep. Yeah. And it may be judgment upon us. Sure. One way or another. It right. may be that right. the, the restraints that exist right now right. are going to be cast aside and we're going to go further yeah. along into degradation and depravity um, because that's what God knows we deserve. Hmm. Or it could be a candidate that's placed in office that is going to help restrain that, at least for a time, um, and that God would not give us what we deserve. Yeah, uh, He may not give us what we deserve in a platform, but give us what we deserve in a candidate. Right. Right. Uh, right. Um, right. And, yep. and that's another way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just think we need to prayerfully look at how can mm. I participate in right. in seeing the will of God executed in order to restrain evil mm -hmm. the best. Yep. It's not yep. ideal. It's not perfect. This is not the church. Yeah, sure. Jesus is not on the ballot. Sure. As much as we would like. Right. Yeah. But his will is. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to prayerfully consider what the will of the Lord is and then vote accordingly, yeah. according to how the Spirit of God directs us. Yeah. I would urge you not to abstain, hmm. but that you would get involved in vote. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. No, that's that's super helpful, you know, because I think when you just look at the personalities of the candidates, it can it, it can be understand or understood why uh, it seems like a hard decision, but it's helpful that you've kind of given us a, a more objective standard to to evaluate how to vote and that's right. looking at the platforms looking at the ideologies that are behind these candidates recognizing that that's really where the that's where the meat is is, right. is the platforms that they're representing and that's something that we can look at look at hold them up you know side by side and say okay well which one of these is is more aligned with with the bible right. with with what god's will would be uh, and then vote accordingly and as pastor rick said we do have not just the privilege but even the duty to participate in that process because it has been given to us by God to be that staying power on evil in, in however we can. So uh, really helpful. I, I trust church that this has been helpful for you. I know that many of you are thinking through this and, and certainly as the that day approaches, uh, having to think about it more. So I hope that this this video will equip you to be able to go into that day and, uh, you know, be a part of that process with confidence, knowing that you're you're making a decision that that God will honor because you're you're doing so in a way that's biblical and that's seeking what what He would desire most. So thank you, Pastor Rick, for serving us so well. In church, we will see you next time on another episode of Living by the Book. Take care.